Uh, thank you, Robert, for introducing yourself. It's pretty interesting uh, the field in which you're graduating in right now. Thank you. And uh, others also can take this time to introduce themselves in the chat and let us know about their educational background, their research interest, and what makes them join the webinar today. Starting in more seven minutes from now. Thank you for joining.
A very warm good morning, good afternoon, or good evening in whichever part of the world you are. I would like to welcome you all for today's webinar on Cheminformatics for Biomedical Drug Discovery. This program is designed to address the challenges associated with understanding, modeling, screening, and applying cheminformatics strategies to improve drug discovery results. The process of finding a new drug against a chosen target for a particular disease usually involves high throughput screening, wherein large libraries of chemicals are tested for their ability to modify the target. With contributions from leading researchers in academia and biotechnology, pharmaceutical industry, as well as experts from the software industry, this comprehensive mentor-guided training program explains how cheminformatics enhances drug discovery. So before we begin with today's webinar, uh, I would like to introduce us. We are a US-based bioinformatics company who is working with multiple academic and commercial collaborators to develop easy-to-use and applicable tools. And our mission is to make bioinformatics more accessible. The omics logic training has been completed by over 24,000 participants from 187 countries in over 300 workshops. And due to this fast growth, our team is working with local and regional coordinators that are helping refine the local program logistics and leverage our online training resources, adapting them to the needs of students and researchers around the world. The training has been completed by participants in six different specialization tracks, which includes oncology, infectious diseases, precision medicine, neuroscience, data science for biomedical data, and comprehensive training on omics data analysis. Over the past several years, we have had the privilege with a number of organizations developing a training program for research-oriented students, faculty and democratizing bioinformatics, making this discipline accessible to thousands of students and faculty around the world. The omicologic research-based training programs are a result of close collaboration between Pine Biotech and numerous academic institutions that have participated in content evaluation, curriculum review, and project design. In this program, we will combine pre-recorded mentor sessions online live Q&A sessions, self-guided study materials, which include courses on the Omics Logic Learn portal and example projects as well. I will be shortly taking you through the portal and uh, show the resources to all of you that you would leverage, which also includes practical assignments and quizzes for an immersive experience that has to be, that has proven to be effective in our well-known and respected Omics Logic programs. The program includes pre-recorded mentor sessions on the program topics by Dr. Puneet Kakkar, a drug discovery scientist and industry analytics manager at Accenture. He holds a PhD in drug discovery and is a strong advocate for using advanced technology in pharmaceutical research and development. As a part of the program, once you have completed the associated resources and done with watching the pre-recorded session video on the program page, you can then schedule a meeting with the mentors and clarify your questions. We will also add you to our bioinformatics community group of, over Skype where you can interact with the mentor and put your questions in the group for the mentors to answer. And once you are specialized in the field of chem, chem informatics, you can further work on a research project under the mental guidance of Dr. Ajit and Dr. Uday from Faba, who are industry specialists with an expertise in the field. So the process begins with the research proposal, and then you discuss your proposal with the mentor to make any changes if required, and proceed ahead with, the, with your research project, and meet the mentor in these research fellowship meetings twice every week to get your project completed and finally published on Omics Logic Learn Portal and repeated journals. The program will leverage our top-rated online tutorials using the Omics Logic Learn portal with smart tracking of activity and curated data sets, which are designed for a great learning experience. So let's quickly sign up on the portal just to make sure that those who have joined us for the first time, you have an account already, already on the portal and have the access to the resources. I'll quickly give a demo on how you can have your account ready 
on the Omics Logic Learn portal. And if you have any questions or face any technical issues, our team is here to assist you. So do let us know. I'll just now quickly visit the Omics Logic Learn portal. I'll put the link to the portal in the chat box for those who are new to have their accounts up ready. If you already have an account, please let me know in the chat by putting in a one or yes, maybe. And if you are signing up right now with me, then please follow these steps. You need to click on the login button to create an account for yourself. Uh, I think you can put in the credentials as required here or use any one of your social media accounts to do so. I will just quickly pick one of my Google accounts to sign in to my account on the portal. You can take this time to uh, sign in your, for your account as well. Awaiting responses in the chat box. Uh, for those who already have an account, please put a one or yes, maybe. And those who are creating their accounts, please put a one once done. So we know that we are to, uh, good to begin with today's session. I pause for a minute or two here for you to have an account ready so that you can follow along the resources and also go through these uh, lessons and courses when the mentor is taking you through them. And so those who have already created an account, the next step for them is to complete their profile. Please make sure that you have an updated profile on the Omics Logic Learn portal, which includes a profile picture. Your name should be in title case. Uh, to make sure that this is the same format that reflects on the certificate, please make sure that your name is in the title case. Please connect your social media accounts and add a brief bio about yourself that will include your educational background and your research interests as well. This is a section which will help you monitor your progress and also ask the mentors. We can see your activity log here and see what you have been completing as a part of the program. And once you complete a specific coursework as a part of the program, you will be able to follow your uh, progress and also download a certificate from the courses tab here on the portal. And also you can access a certificate from the certificates tab. That was about the profile section and why is it important to have a complete profile. Now I'll quickly help you understand how you can navigate easily on the Omics Logic Learn portal. So once you have your account ready up here and have completed your profile, you will have the access to the courses as a part of the Chem Informatics program. Now, when you click on the courses tab in the menu bar, you will find a list of tags here on the right side that you can uh, click on to access the resources for the particular program. And we will be following the program page for uh, the session uh, schedule, the recordings, and also the resources that you are required to go through as a part of this program. So towards the end of uh, the session, I will be taking you shortly through the session schedule of the program and we discuss what all we will be covering throughout the, pro, uh, the sessions in the program. So this is the program page that we've been referring to. But before we do that, let us now quickly begin with today's session. I would now like to pass on the stage to Dr. Mohit and uh, I will take up the message in the chat, in the chat section itself. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Sonalika, for the introduction and for letting everyone uh, log in to the resources. And uh, we will be sharing uh, some of those resources during the presentation. And uh, I hope that uh, we can together for, uh, do this, some of the hands-on part that we have planned for the uh, for today's webinar. So I'll start with uh, by sharing my screen. So, Snalika, can you let me know? Yes, sir, we can see your screen. All right. Um, Thank you again. 
for all of you who have joined today's session and wanted to learn about uh, chem informatics in biomedical drug discovery. So for today's session, we did, uh, we discussed and we thought that we will be it will be nice uh, to discuss some of the critical opportunities and challenges uh, that are being faced by the industry, faced by research labs. And uh, we wanted to discuss uh, about the overview of how this entire modern drug discovery pipeline is now functioning <clears throat> and it's producing results in many places. And many of you are excited for the same reasons to be able to explore more of this and to be able to learn and apply to some of your own research. So um, as we go on for the session, as we discuss different uh, different uh, different agendas for today's meeting, I'd like to request Sonalika to maybe prepare a project proposal form and uh, share it with me. Uh, Sonalika, if you can do that. Uh, so towards the end of the session, I will want to discuss the project proposal and how uh, one can start working on a research idea already. Uh, starting with the uh, st uh, as the program starts in a week's time. So uh, uh, as uh, we have been discussing that there are certain ag agendas that we would want to cover. One of those agendas uh, is precision medicine. So when we are discussing about biomedical drug discovery, when we are discussing about the use of chem informatics in biomedical drug discovery, we are talking about a specific specialization that involves structural biology, that involves understanding of how uh, to analyze three-dimensional uh, structures in three-dimensional space and how to uh, you know devise strategies as well. So, uh, I mean, to think about that, there are other two other two aspects that uh, we would be discussing. Those are drug designing and drug repurposing, um, uh, which are uh, used quite often in even in industry as well as in academia. And uh, during the presentation and during the session, uh, I'll be happy to answer questions. So please put their, put your questions in the chat. So in this training program, uh, uh, what we have discussed, what we have discussed so far is about the different aspects of uh, um, biomedical drug discovery. But in the training program, we are going to follow a curriculum and that curriculum would include a specific softwares and tools which are open source and we'll be able to share with you how to install those softwares and how to use them on the cloud and uh, what are the uh, what are the associated resources that you can utilize to make the most out of this uh, training program that is upcoming so we have planned uh, a very detailed curriculum that i'll be showcasing and i'll, I'll be going through but before that i wanted to start with the fact that what we are doing and why we are doing this and why we should uh, learn about all of this. So let's start with the fact that how the modern biomedical drug discovery pipeline works and what are the different components and how can this be an entire story, like a complete story with all the where we know all the pieces, because what is ha what has happened and what we know for sure is that uh, for many drugs that we've been using so frequently, um, we don't know the mechanism of action. So having a complete knowledge of mechanism of action is, is something that the modern biomedical drug discovery uh, is utilizing uh, for, by that is being utilized by pharma, computational biology or bioinformatics company that are <clears throat> providing services as well as uh, research labs and researchers. So how do we incorporate that all sort of information into the model so that it makes sense, so that it relates really close to what is happening biologically or what is happening in a real life situation. So, uh, I mean, in modern biomedical drug discovery pipeline, uh, there are certain aspects that we uh, that we have covered uh, in our omics logic portal. And to those participants who will be joining this program, obviously connecting those dots and then uh, figuring out uh, maybe target protein or a proposal would make uh, total sense. So um, uh, as we were discussing precision medicine, so precision medicine initiate, uh, initiating from uh, clinical and molecular uh, pharmacology introduces a new era in healthcare, right? That it, the, the entire purpose of this is that it aims to identify and predict the optimum treatment for a patient or a cohort 
Now, uh, evidence-based medicine uh, integrates information from basic in vivo observational studies and then clinical trials uh, uh, were, uh, were done for, to do meta-analysis data for clinical considerations. So hence, it, it, it can be stated that this, uh, this entire, like often we see that population averages, uh, but uh, population averages the forest, but misses the tree. So the trees are here individual patients, right? Where the utilization of precision medicine may not see the uh, may not see the forest, but for the trees, and that is quite uh, relevant and important that we have realized that uh, all of us are uh, having a different genetic makeup, uh, which makes us different from each other. We react to different medicines differently. So all that information uh, can be you know modeled together so that we can re reach to a place where we can give uh, recommendations based on the personalized way of uh, 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 reporting. So now the state of our tools for modeling and simulations in pharmacology, they try to extrapolate knowledge gained gain through this experimental process or procedures with either, either a top-down uh, approach or a bottom-up bottom -up approach. So this um, uh, modeling and simulation often it what it does is that it tries to connect the dots and reveals the bigger picture so picture uh, the bigger picture is the population or the forest so considering what kind of individuals or trees are in there we have to understand and we have to figure out at an atomic level and which is very fascinating and really uh, really uh, nice to know that from a sequence level we are looking at the functional level and then we are looking at the mechanistic level uh, by looking at the chemistry that is going on um, in the within the molecules. So uh, in this program, there are some components that is really exciting for me, and I guess uh, it would be exciting for all of you as well. So um, we would want to discuss this that how research allows us to utilize experimental or clinical data through this molecule uh, modeling and simulation uh, simulation of biomedical tools and this will help and this is helping for sure in disease progression dynamics in machine machine learning and relevant bioengineering approaches for either drug response prediction where like including drug interactions drug interaction data is also included then adverse drug reactions data is also included and that all all of this is leading to drug repurposing or you know drug discovery now uh, we also want to understand that what are like what different this this uh, slide itself it has a huge number of information but at the same time it also tell us about the pathway like uh, what cellular omics can give us what microbiome and virome uh, information can give us and what clinical and phenotypic data can give us and when we combine all of this what is a system biology approach and how then we how we can then discuss about the strategy the strategy is to find a solution and the solution comes from chemistry so how do we use those drugs those maybe biologics or based on the data that we are getting so this various types of omics data that is described in detail intercellular and intracellular processes which are really associated with common diseases and these data sets can be analyzed to understand biology behind host factors and as well as like a micro uh, biome composition in our bodies and the environment we live in so uh, to drive infections and to cause you know deterioration of health these also have an effect on destabilizing the immune system and let's these all of this led led to you know clinical manifestation of a disease so um, uh, it would be nice to to understand this from a perspective of you know an example for of, uh, so let's try out an example so the way uh, in which bacteria infects infect cells are important for understanding the host pathogen interaction agreed so if it is true, then the knowledge also opens up a world of practical applications. So what are the applications? So for example, it can support the design of new anti antibacterial or vaccines in, 
in case of uh, when we are discussing about uh, healthcare these are the different applications when we are discussing about the soil or marine bacteria it can help in creating strategies for rebalancing natural ecosystem so there is a huge application so one can use machine learning to explore how bacteria interacts with the environment by analyzing those so there is this case study and there's a recently published uh, article uh, in nature that uh, shows that analyzing data from uniprod database in itself and using uh, the protein prediction software that recently came out alpha fold uh, one can bridge uh, like fill this gap and knowledge in this area so there is this study where uh, fibrillar adhesins these are the proteins that are located on bacterial cell surface and which mediate interactions with the environment for example host cells or the bacteria or the other bacteria so there was a study on this so these proteins are usually uh, have a stock which helps them cross the bacterial cell surface and be projected closer to their targets so regardless of what they are trying to bind to they will be they will be this is the mechanism through which they work so uh, the study uh, analyze the data from a couple of species and then uh, the researchers were able to identify more than 6500 of such uh, uh, fibrillar additions that were not seen before and this was done through the sequence analysis so uniprot is a sequence database and uh, i think many of you know about uniprot very well and then you uh, I, we will be discussing in this session also alpha fold and deep minds uh, this innovation which helped in predicting the uh, structure of those fibrillar additions and then we got to know about uh, from this analysis uh, a, a new world uh, perhaps uh, that is helping in the process of binding which is so essential for bacteria so this this work actually goes beyond simple curiosity because by understanding how bacteria interacts with biotin or abiotin surfaces researchers can start to explore how drug can be used to target these interactions or whether the bacteria living in our body or our environment can be changed so this approach can uh, uh, could allow uh, researchers to improve the uh, health of gut microbiomes the bacterial community living in a patient's gut for example so these are some of the uh, uh, approaches that have been taken up by the new multi-omics uh, way of seeing things and then integrating it with uh, the system biology approach and then the computational uh, uh, solutions so in this program and we've been discussing this that uh, how the uh, different elements are you know put together so uh, so when we are discussing about uh, finding new targets and when we are discussing about uh, the data analysis part of uh, bioinformatics so you have heard about transcriptomics and like how gene expression patterns uh, in association with clinical data help identify molecular biomarkers which are used for diagnostics and for therapy selection so new discoveries include a better understanding of these complex diseases at the subcellular level as well as for target identification uh, for noble drug discovery and even for drug repurposing so all of this is helpful for us to uh, towards uh, target discovery which is a very important step in biomedical drug discovery now a uh, new target discovery so target based screens as many of you are from maybe biological background and know about the target based based screens so in wet lab uh, or in uh, when we are doing experiments so target based screens offer a reductionist approach to drug discovery because generally it's employed uh, in in vitro biochemical assays to search through the libraries of small molecules so they are based on developing assays to detect compounds that interact with the specific molecular entity most often a protein right which is known or hypothesized from a basic research to be involved in processes impaired in disease of interest that's the drug discovery concept that many of us think it to be so uh, in that process phenotypic screening in contrast employs a holistic approach most often at the level of the cell 
sometimes you get uh, that data also from cell from tissue or from organ or even whole animals can be employed in some of those studies so one of such example is that uh, the personalized medicine example is uh, trastuzumab uh, trast uh, trastuzumab trastuzumab which was a first in class immunotherapeutic target Uh, targeting the HER2 tyrosine uh, kinase receptor, and it's used to treat patient with HER2 overexpressed breast uh, tumors. And we have a project on those, which uh, project on this on Learn Portal, uh, and also we cover it in a transcriptomics program. And but it is important that how all of this is connected. So there is a molecular approach that uses. all of these technologies i was discussing about and gave gave example for uh, gene expression studies uh, uh, where we discussed about a biomarker and then uh, the um, the overexpressing uh, her to breast tumors and then there are genetic studies or genomic studies where we are looking at the panels where we are looking at the mutations the variants so these are some approaches then there is a system approach that i've discussed then we have all the different uh, validations that we can do utilizing bioinformatics so this was a kind of an overview to what we are doing why we are doing this and how all of this is connected because on the portal you will be able to find uh, different omics technologies and then why we are doing chem informatics so this is one of the major component of this entire drug discovery process so i hope that all of this overview is kind of uh, make sense and is clear to uh, to you uh, if if you have any questions i'll be happy to um happy to answer so um, next uh, part of this program uh, of this um, presentation will include that what we are going to do in terms of the curriculum how we are going to cover different aspects of what we have been discussing and how all of this makes sense uh, if you think about a research proposal or a research project that you might be thinking about or you are interested in the future to work on so today we are meeting here and we are discussing about uh, the upcoming uh, fall program which is chem informatics for biomedical drug discovery so this uh, program is going to start on 23rd august and will run till uh, october um and uh, there are uh, models where you can join and complete the program in either 45 days or 60 days or 90 days based on the uh, maybe you are interested to work further with us or work on a research proposal all of this is possible within a, a larger time frame and uh, in this program we will be covering uh, through sessions and uh, there will be resources so i uh, in this slide i wanted to uh, simplify to all of uh, all of you who are uh, who are uh, here today that how this is uh, conceptualized and how the curriculum works and uh, what are the different components that one will be having access to to able to be able to get some of the outcomes that we've been discussing uh, for this so we've been discussing about the different types of data different types of approaches and how structural biology approach is an important uh, uh, critical component of this but uh, you have like uh, all the coursework associated with the other omics technologies that could be integrated into this process but if you want to work on structural biology chem informatics and you already have a defined idea or a research target or sorry target or, or a target in your mind then i think we you can start from the uh, from the uh, from the course work that we are going to offer as a part of this program which is uh, structural biology and chem informatics course work which kind of is uh, developed for beginners and this is especially to those uh, who are either from high school or from uh, undergraduate level and would want to start with a very basic understanding so all of this omics logic training involves a basic course work then an intermediate course work and then the research work so for those who wants to get like an understanding of uh, how the basics work we will be sharing the uh, resources with you these are the courses or uh, lessons 
that uh, will be support that will be provided uh, with every session uh, throughout the training program uh, so that uh, everyone who is from a different educational background or are from non biology background could also uh, work on this so uh, as i was saying that uh, from uh, very basics to understanding of uh, why we are doing this where we can find information and uh, what kind of data is there uh, so uh, these all questions are also being an being answered so uh, how protein acts what is the future of structural biology how anima spectroscopy works what is uh, what is uh, cryo em and what are the difference between like the when you when you compare structures when you're thinking about you know con uh, conducting a experiment uh, and uh, in silico experiment on structural biology drug discovery drug designing what are the things that you need to see so there are some of the very basic important facts when you are uh, obtaining data when you are obtaining structural data what are the parameters you can you know uh, check to understand if the model that you're considering is is of uh, is going to give you the right answers or not so those basic concepts are being uh, discussed in these lessons and we are adding more lessons in this uh, in this series as well which will be which we will be sharing with the participants of the program uh, throughout the training now about the structure so it's 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 quite simple and uh, it's uh, it's kind of flows from one session to another and that's what i wanted to cover in uh, today's presentation mainly that uh, what what will be done throughout the program so we will start with the basic sessions where we discussed about the um, the uh, the structure what are the different types of protein structures what are the interactions where do you find this computational resources for protein protein interaction conformational analysis protein folding uh, some of the basic concepts how this happened and what are the computational resources associated with some of the prediction tools or some of the analysis tools not prediction here because we are doing a prediction uh, different session uh, dedicated to predictions but here we are going going to discuss more about uh, how to you know find the tertiary structure the secondary structure and build from there then uh, we are going to introduce first we are going to discuss about big molecules macromolecules and then we are going to discuss about small molecules in the same uh, prospect that uh, how to obtain and understand about small molecules where do you find such data where, what are the different ways to understand this data what are different ways to express this data in the databases how to find this and all of that so these are basic overview sessions and then from here we go to the actual databases and we start exploring those databases because it's very important to understand what is available on public repositories uh, because you want to maximize and utilize the public data and if you have uh, proprietary data that is an added uh, thing that you can do in a research project but in the terms of uh, education and learning we will be using the public repositories and where you will see that uh, people are publishing uh, almost uh, thousands of articles uh, based on the analysis that are available through the public repository and public data so here uh, there is an aspect of uh, hands on activity which would involve um, use of some uh, some free softwares which uh, we for which we will be able to we will be able to share with you how to install them and then show you how to work on them so also we will be sharing uh, emails throughout this training program so uh, the emails will contain information about the coursework but not only the coursework but also publications and link to all of the uh, all of the databases that we are covering and the uh, and the certain uh, repositories that we are going to use so all of this is like building up to the uh, knowledge of how to uh, first of all understand about the data and information and then where to find it and uh, then how to download it and visualize it and uh, in this process we will be using a lot of case studies from rc RC rcsb pdb and uh, we will be using protein data bank uh, by to uh, compare structures and to understand that what we what are the experimental structures that are available for our problem 
if there are no experimental structures what would be the strategy to model such uh, such cases in such cases and then uh, like how do you connect uh, from uh, different uh, protein uh, like different complex interactions because uh, now with a lot of single structures the world is now moving towards the complex uh, complexes structure of complexes where more than one proteins are involved in in certain uh, biological function which is greatly um, uh, are uh, are associated with uh, diseases and mutations and all so we will be discussing some case studies and then we will be working on such uh, such data using the rcsb pdb protein data bank where all the experimental structures are available so integrating this information you can also uh, work on your own uh, project here so one of the idea is to use uh, the structures that are available and we will be able to do some search uh, searches based on the queries so here i was as i was asking uh, earlier sonalika to share the project form so the project form will involve uh, that will include the description about the protein of interest and if there is literature available on it so that we can start uh, working or start developing a proposal now uh, after doing that like when we understand that where the structures are how they how they are uh, available and what are the ways to visualize it and uh, what uh, how how can we compare and align and see the statistics so one of the important aspect of you know comparing and writing a publication or writing a report or showing uh, this to the community requires some statistical uh, validation through tools and through different analysis so that statistical validation is something that we are going to cover in that which involves root mean square devi deviation when we compare structures in angstrom uh, uh, unit and all of that and then we are going to move to the session next session which is more on target structure prediction where we are going to use uh, the structure prediction tools so this is a critical part of drug discovery or chem informatics based drug discovery for preparing the receptor because uh, i mean one of the objective what you are trying to do is you are trying to mimic uh, the uh, mimic what is happening within a cell or within uh, within a uh, system so you want to make it as close as to the actual uh, actual um, environment that in which the structure is so there are certain tools that we are going to use we are going to understand from a point of view of structural biologist if the structure is making sense and if the structure is properly modeled and uh, to do that we want to validate one of the ways to use multiple uh, multiple algorithms so we are going to go get some hands on activity on that so the session is sort of divided in this way so target identification process then uh, what are the what are the actual meanings as i was describing you about target identification and it goes in like really really depth then we have protein structure prediction why and how then comparative protein modeling and alpha fold and then there is a working session so uh, comparative protein modeling we are discussing about a template based modeling so template recognition how can we find templates and find the right kind of template because sometimes we are try like in in drug discovery there are open there are different conformations of protein right and then there are different ligand bound states and when you look at the structural data you'll find a lot of variations there how to understand that and use that in your experiment is very important so that alignment back and then when we are looking at the structure when we are looking at a model then we are looking at the different components of the secondary structure that has been modeled uh, which involves the loops that play a critical role in many of the binding processes whether it is maybe a small ion or a metal ion or or a uh, or a ligand so loop modeling side chain modeling model optimization model validation some of these aspects that we are going to discuss and then uh, use some of these modeling tools which are very famous and used utilized by uh, uh, 
uh, by the entire scientific community who are working on the similar area, such as Modeler or AlphaFold. So we will start our uh, AlphaFold predictions from here and understand what are the challenges, limitations, and uh, how can uh, this uh, the predictions uh, make sense in biological context? And if not, what are the solution strategies for that? So after target prediction, uh, the the thing that one would want to learn about is that, yeah, right, I have now a good system, good biological system to test on. I have prepared a good target and the, it mimics what uh, what is happening. Uh, it mimics almost of what is happening within. So we would want to now understand that what are the solution strategies so here onwards we are discussing about the solution strategies so virtual screening is one of such strategy that is that is going to be uh, utilized and understood in this session which is the session five which is where we are almost at the midway so uh, like uh, virtual screening can also be optimized because the, the the databases have millions and billions of compounds, small compounds, and you don't want to, you can't actually use all those all of those um, molecules to screen at on on a single protein or a multiple targets or whatever because it's going to take forever. And then also it's computationally expensive and extensive and expensive. So you would want to do a lot of optimization. A lot of you know knowledge based uh, uh, screening so that's what we are going to discuss in target identification and then we have some case studies uh, which we have worked with uh, in our in um, in our research projects with uh, with uh, our collaborators one of such project is roswell park cancer research institute where we worked and uh, one of the molecule is uh, is being utilized for uh, treatment and is effective so how does this process happen what are the different ways we did the screening we utilize the top research platform and uh, then uh, based on machine learning and representation and clustering we kind of reduced uh, the chemical space to a significant space where you can actually now test test them low so you would want to reduce the chemical space from thousands and millions of compounds to maybe 100 or 500 or 1000 and then you do more intensive testing uh, virtually before finalizing top 10 or top 100 for your experiments now uh, then as i was saying that after virtual screening it comes to very uh, specialized kind of screening which is the part where we discuss about molecular docking and it's a very popular pro method and many of you might have been aware of it and might have used it already but in this uh, in the session we uh, dr puneet uh, who has already prepared a lot of sessions for you who will be participating in the program which are pre-recorded sessions uh, for specific tutorials that we have uh, for this for this uh, session six which is practical experience in docking where we will be covering like tools such as argus lab uh, a highly uh, featured molecular modeling and graphics program uh, which works on windows and the program contains two docking engines with a small uh, with a scoring function which is very much used which kind of gives you an estimate of binding affinity uh, so maybe ka binding association or something you can correlate it with uh, uh, in uh, for the validation like uh, if you're comparing number of molecules uh, which would be the you know top 10 or how do you filter them so these are the tools that are used and useful to filter them based on their based on their binding and interactions with the with your protein molecule so this is what we have planned uh, and then we have an interesting session which is uh, again now from from structure now we are using more and more about uh, how we can do this at a scalable uh, way by applying uh, statistical uh, uh, tools such as R language or R, R uh, coding. So this is quite simple because all of this is done in Google Collab Notebook, which we will be sharing with you. And it has all the tutorials and you can play the notebook and 
take up and, uh, and do the different steps and this is you know why this is we are doing this this is like you did the virtual screening where you identified from a large library of molecules into and get leads so after getting leads you you got maybe top 10 or top 20 leads and you you are looking at the top poses and you're analyzing and you're che checking the interaction but can you optimize it further so for optimization what you need is something that are uh, that medicinal chemists are expert in that chemists are working uh, working in that changing uh, the different orientation changing functional groups and doing more drug optimization so this session actually helps in those who are uh, into drug optimization so chem informatics and using r uh, and those Google Colab notebooks, you can generate different conformations and change it by uh, by just changing few sentences or the group information in the in the notebook. So all of this is quite uh, automated and it's really easy to use. And that's one of the objective for creating such a curriculum so that it's easy to use and implement. And later, once you gain expertise and more and more expertise, you'll be more easy and comfortable to go for advanced uh, research. So um, after this, we have a uh, discussion on a case study. So this is a case study based uh, um, session uh, by one of the experts from industry to discuss about the drug discovery process, the high throughput process, the structural biology screening, and some of the case studies, uh, which is to discovery of a kinase inhibitor for lung cancer. So we will have a pharma expert uh, from from the industry discussing about this. Uh, after that, we we are in during this process are going to discuss or share with you a lot of publications that would make sense for you to develop research ideas and encourage you to develop research ideas if you don't have already one. Uh, so in this, uh, uh, towards the ninth session and we are towards the uh, last three sessions of the program, we are going to discuss advancements in uh, AI-based molecular drug discovery. So in, in this session, we are going to deep dive in more in, um, into the alpha fold predictions so alpha fold uh, you know in a way uh, they have already predicted 200 million structures uh, this is the news that i've heard like a couple of weeks ago uh, so all the uniprot unipro protein sequences are now modeled so you can uh, simply utilize those and then based on uh, uh, all of that there are some limitations still they, that uh, you know that alpha fold is not able to solve. So what are those limitations? Uh, for example, the structures for which there is no information at all, like noble structures. Obviously, alpha fold can't solve the uh, so, uh, give you solution for that because it does not have the training or the training on such data. So what are the solution strategies and what are the different uh, case studies in terms of how pharma and computational biology companies are utilizing this uh, AI in molecular drug discovery, how academia and industry is utilizing this AI in drug discovery, and how we can, as a researcher or as a scientist or as a student, uh, can uh, incorporate or get some of this technology in and use it for our own research. Uh, many of them open source or if we can develop something using the resources that are with our mentors. So um, as I was telling you about uh, the uh, AI in drug discovery, so uh, as AlphaFold, I was telling you that they have now open it, open it for open access. This open access, uh, uh, open access database is available for all of us and we will be downloading and we will be looking at that. So some of the limitations that I was telling you in the previous and to the previous slides are listed out here actually. So different versions of alpha fold. And then there are, uh, in biology, you will find uh, some proteins are functional as, uh, as multi multimers. So how do we do complexes? So I was telling you that this is a challenge and uh, this is something that uh, people are trying to solve, uh, especially structural biologists who are working on specific problems, especially working with research groups who have a biological background and they are conducting experiments and knowing from the, uh, from the illusion that what is the 
what is the weight and based on the molecular weight, uh, how many, um, how, if it is a multimeric protein or there are different ways to know that. So from that information, can we, can, can we produce those models? So again, to the same point that I've been discussing for a while, the correctness of the model is pretty important and it should include all the biological information insights that we know of. So the more we can build that uh, closer to the biological information, the more the chances are for us to get the right kind of result. So alpha fold and that, and then mutations. There's a huge, huge challenge with mutations. So I've been working on many projects, which involves mutation, obviously with COVID and all the um, cancer mutations. So how do you understand what are the structural changes? How how do you capture those structural changes? Because what you are seeing is just a snapshot, is not the complete picture. So here, the you know uh, application of molecular dynamic simulations and uh, uh, normal mode analysis, and then different types of uh, whole cell simulations comes into picture. And that would be maybe a research topic or as a research that one can do. So uh, as we've been discussing about uh, the same thing, so in the context, the case study that we will be discussing in this uh, will be a pharma company who is utilizing the information uh, and the uh, deep learning processes for not only screening and all of that, but for new molecular new molecule generation using graph theory and using deep learning. So how they are utilizing this and uh, what are the different uh, solutions that they have come up with? Because uh, many of these are, ex we thought many of these are experimental, but what are the different uh, situation in the market? If it is, it is, uh, it, it is going to be successful or not? If it is, what stage it is in? So those are the different, uh, those are the, th that's the case study that we have, uh, that we are going to discuss. And then uh, we have uh, the session on uh, Data Warrior, which will be discussed towards the end of the program, where which is to you know understand all of this. So we I just discussed that calculation of key chemical properties, generation of new chemical compounds, and identification of chemical representation. So before that, we discussed about the case study so that you know that what is the application, and then you have you are excited to learn this yourself. So uh, that it would be what we are going to cover in the advanced chem informatics session, uh, which is the last, uh, I think, uh, one of the last sessions. And then we have some of the case studies, uh, uh, which is very important. So uh, at the beginning of all of this, we will be start. We will be we will be working on um, we will be working on the project form. So if many any of you have a project idea and you want to work on a project. Uh, next session, we are going to discuss about the research projects. So what are the chem informatics research projects? How to design a chem informatics research projects? What are the different stages, challenges and limitation? And then the omics logic research fellowship. So this is towards the end. So anyone who has been working on a project or would want to develop a project and work on that, can work with me, we can work with Dr. Raghav, can work with the industry experts, Dr. Puneet, uh, which would be through the Omics Logic Research Fellowship. So this is the 11th uh, session, uh, more about uh, what are the next steps that one can take. So we have several of these case studies, integration of omics data into research projects, pharma pro projects for bio biomolecular or biomarker discovery. So these all come boils down to the structure of the protein and understanding. So these have the chem informatics component and then the COVID-19 case study uh, where we are discussing understanding the different uh, binding uh, domains and then strategizing based on the structure and uh, what are the different uh, uh, ways to look at infectious disease research. So one of the things that we have been discussing is about all of this in the respect of uh, protein structure. So protein structure as it's a um, organic molecule with a lot of uh, chemicals uh, forming the structure and there is also a component of electrostatic uh, distribution the charge distribution the hydrophobicity what are the different um, phys uh, uh, 
physiologic or physical properties of the amino acid and how does that make a difference when it comes down to you know um binding so this is all knowledge based and this can be gained through the simple structural analysis by utilizing some of the tools that the structural biologists or computational structural biologists utilized and uh, i will be able to share some of my knowledge and information that i've gained and worked on uh, and pub uh, on the publications that i've uh, been able to publish so far so i'll be able to help in that and uh, then we have the last session which is more about uh, the uh, about a case study that what are the examples of successful and failed drug discovery development by one of the um, industry experts uh, to know and understand that what are the uh, different things that we have to look into when we are discussing about uh, drug discovery and what people have done and what they have learned so far from this experience so that's uh, that's the entire structure of this uh, program and I hope that many of you would be interested in doing so uh, throughout the training program. And uh, we have like working sessions and I have small, small um, uh, exercise today that uh, maybe uh, we can try. Um, so um, uh, will that be fine for you? Okay, thank you, Percy. You, you, I got your yes. So, all right, all right. So, um, before we do this, I just wanted to share with you the project proposal uh, form, and uh, the project proposal form uh, is something that we are going to share with the program participant. And uh, what it work, what it helps is that it's from the very beginning, uh, it it gives you the opportunity to start working, uh, learning about these different technologies and tools and uh, case studies, and maybe apply it for your own project. So you have to share the project title, project description, summary, uh, some lines and thoughts about what you have, uh, what project idea that you would want to work on. Link to some raw data means the protein data bank or some reference publications and from here we build it into a proposal and then into a research project so that's the project proposal form uh, and now uh, back to the uh, back to uh, our um, our exercise So can you all, uh, so let me share this uh, in the chat. That would be helpful. The sequence uh, of the protein. So let's identify if you have a protein sequence, how do you identify what protein it is? That's the first question. Second question is to find uh, this, uh, this uh, protein, uh, using this protein identifier, uh, find this into in the PDB and find the Uniprot ID and then try to predict the structure. So these are the three different exercises that uh, actually act, I think uh, one of the issues is that we are running out of time and uh, we have reached towards the end of the session. So we can do one thing that we will be able to share with you the, um, the exercise and also um, in a couple of days the uh, the solution and uh, in the meantime it'll be great if you start uh, <clears throat> start uh, joining the program and then we'll be able to share with you the more resources and uh, to tell you more about that uh, i'll pass it pass the stage to sunalika thank you so much sir i would now share my screen Right. So, if there are any questions from uh, what Dr. Uh, Mohit has uh, shared, you can please put it in the chat box and uh, some of you in, to answer your question. And now, I would like to take this session ahead to explain how you can register for this program. Uh, so, I'll just share the link to the program page in the chat box, first of all. So, the session schedule that Dr. Mohit went through uh, extensively, 
is mentioned here on the program page, you can find the schedule here with all the topics that would be covered along with the session's title and also the associated resources. Uh, these resources and also the links to the tools and databases will be given along with the uh, supplementary material of the program itself. All right. And now if you want to register yourself for the program, all you have to do is just visit the program page and uh, scroll down to reach to the register uh, section. Here you can see three different subscription levels, which includes an access to the program for 45 days, 60 days or 90 days. Now, to make sure some of the points I wanted to clarify here that the access to the session recordings and the supplementary material would be the same for all of these three subscription level types. The difference lies only in the access to uh, the portal for the duration of access to the resources and also to the research project. So in the 45 days of the subscription level, you'll be able to Go through the resources that includes the uh, record, the pre-recorded uh, sessions as put on the program page, associated resources. And if you want one-on-one -on -one mental guidance for the questions that you come across, uh, taking access uh, to those 60 days of the program would be perfect for you, where you can schedule one-on-one -on -one meetings based on uh, your availability with the mentor and take your questions. And if you want to work on a research project, then enrolling in the 90 days program would be the perfect option for you. So in the 60 days option, you'll be able to complete the program and also come up with the research proposal. So you can meet the mentor and discuss your research ideas after a literature review, and then come up with a research proposal, design your hypothesis. And if you want to work on a research project and get a, certificate, uh, get a publication out of it, then the 90 day subscription would be the best that you can pick. Now, uh, if you belong to uh, a different country, so this is mentioned in dollars. And if you belong to, let's say, India or some other country here, you can simply pick the option by clicking on this country option that comes on the top right in the menu bar. I just click on INR, you need to click over here and the currency would be changed here for the registration type. This would be easy for you now to proceed ahead with. So that is the simplest way how you can register yourself for the program. And if there are any questions about registration, you can ask us, the team is here. Also we have here uh, Ms. Parshthar, she will help you get started with the program. She'll help you in your registration process. Uh, yes, definitely there are. We have the scholarship option available for the program as well. And uh, Sparsh can share the scholarship form with you. Dira, can you please put your email address? Okay, thank you, Sparsh. Uh, she has put her email address here. Dira, you can reach out to Sparsh on marketing at and she'll help you out with the scholarship form. You need to fill out the scholarship form. Your application will be reviewed by uh, us and then we we'll get back to you with the possibilities on what scholarship can you get to enroll for the program. Thank you, Dira. Now, if you have any other questions, please let us know in the chat. Maybe you can also unmute yourself and ask. We would be glad to help you out with it.